Welcome to another transformer winding video. This is a microwave oven transformer. Now in my previous videos, I showed you how you can take a microwave oven transformer like you see here and convert it into any transformer that you would like using the transformer calculator software, which was shown in the about section of that video. What I'm going to do in this video is show you how you can make a six volt, two and a half amp power supply or a charger for a 6 volt battery. Now ordinarily with microwave oven transformers if you leave the heavy gauge primary winding intact and then you chop out the secondary winding and wind on your 12 or 10 gauge wire that will work fine but the problem you may run into is the primary winding due to the fact that it's being overdriven for the size core that's being used the winding may become hot and the only way to prevent that heating would be to put a microwave oven cooling fan in close proximity to your microwave oven transformer or to rewind the primary winding as well. But in this video what I'm going to do is we're going to leave the heavy gauge primary winding intact, that's the 120 volt heavier wire, and what we're going to do with the secondary is we're going to remove it from the e-core and then we're going to remove approximately half of the turns. Once we remove roughly half the turns, when you do this, it's a good idea to remove maybe 30 or 40 percent of the turns, pop it back into the e-core, clamp it together, and just check it out to make sure you're getting around 13.5 volts output on your heavy gauge primary. If you are, then you can put everything back together and weld the transformer back. If you're not, then you're going to continue to remove more turns off of the fine winding of the secondary. By removing half the turns of the secondary winding, what you're doing is you're making a transformer that's very efficient. Ordinarily, if you fed the power through the primary winding that's a heavy wire of approximately 105 turns, the transformer, even at idle with nothing connected to the secondary, is going to be drawing a lot of current. It's going to be drawing five, 600 watts or more and you're wasting a lot of electricity doing that. So by cutting out the secondary, removing half of the turns, you're going to have a very efficient transformer that's not going to get hot. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut open the transformer EI core. This end here is one solid cap. This is one flat section of the eyes from the EI core. I'm going to just cut the welds off and pop it off. Once that's done, Carefully slide off the heavy gauge primary. Put that to the side. You don't want to damage that. Once that's done, I'm going to pull out the shunts that are in here, the metal plates between the primary and the secondary. Toss those out. I'm going to remove the little filament winding in here. It's like two turns. Throw that away. And then I'm going to slide out the secondary, high voltage secondary. And once that's out, I'm going to take off approximately half of the turns of thin wire on the secondary. First thing I'm going to do is open up this end cap and slide out the two windings and then I'll come right back and show you what it looks like. Alright, this is with the I core removed from the end of the E section. Now I'm going to gently place a piece of plastic in between the two and then pry right under here to pop this one up and off. All right, this is with the primary removed. Next thing to do is to pull out this filament winding, the shunts, and then slide out the secondary. Once you remove the shunts and the filament winding, be sure to cut the wire from the high voltage secondary output off of the E-core before you slide it out. All right, this is the secondary that's been removed. Now I'm going to unwind approximately half of the turns and then reinstall it back into the e-core. All right, the 6 volt 2.5 amp transformer is now complete. It's welded back, welded here, and it's welded on the bottom. You could take a look at how nicely the new primary came out. This is where the 120 volts will be fed into, and over here is where you're going to be getting your low voltage coming out. 
This is the opposite side with the wires. That's all heat shrunk and wrapped. And I also put E6000 to keep things from moving around. The core itself is covered in paper before I slid the windings over the E-core. For the demo, I'm using a load, which is an incandescent headlamp for my scooter, but it works just fine for this demonstration for 6 volts. Right now you can see the voltage is 6.62 on the output of the secondary, which is coming off of this one right here. For the rectifier, I made a bridge rectifier out of four 3 amp 5822 Schottky diodes. And the purpose of that is to limit losses during conversion from AC to DC. And I have the smoothing cap, which is a 1000 microfarad, 25 volt. So we have the light running. Now this transformer stays very cool. I let it run for about two hours with a two and a half amp load on the secondary. And all it does is just get slightly warm, which is fantastic. You don't have the problem of the core heating up anymore like you would if you applied 120 volts to that side of the transformer and took off the power and your secondary. Right over here is where I tapped into the AC line to measure the current. And as you can see, we're only drawing around 200 milliamps, which is not much at all. And we are supplying two and a quarter amps of current into this light bulb and we're sitting at 6.7. Now if I add a little bit more of a load to that light, maybe a 5 ohm resistor, I can get that down to 6 volts and then the current would be right around 2.5 amps. Now because we're converting from AC to DC, there is a little bit of a power loss in that conversion. And that is why I use the Schottky diodes is to limit the losses. Now if we just took the AC current output directly off the new secondary over here, you would notice that the voltage would be much higher. Right now it would be around 7.8, and I'd be drawing closer to 3 amps on that bulb. If I remove the bulb from the circuit, and now we go over here and take a look, the open is 13.4, and you notice the current is only around 30 milliamps. So that's pretty good. You're only drawing 30 milliamps with nothing connected. And then once you connect something, you're drawing 200. Put this back on. All right. 6.8. We're at 6.63. And we're back to the 200 milliamps. You can use this to charge 6 volt lead acid batteries, or you can use it to power a circuit that requires up to 2.5 amps. If you're not looking for a DC output, but only an AC output, if you left it as is without the bridge rectifier and the capacitor, you can expect a 6 volt power supply delivering well over 3 amps. Let's take a look at the current rating. Alright, I changed to this meter. It gives a better display, easier to see, and I like the way it works better. It's on the 20 amp setting. We're going to measure the current that was going into that bulb when it was 6.63 volts. All right. It's on. And we're right around two and a quarter amps. So it does work extremely well. And like I said, there's no heating issues whatsoever. It's just slightly warm. And that's about it. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you for watching.